Pro Tips! Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Pro Tips! As you know, water makes up 98% of your coffee, so the water chemistry that your brain with has a big role to play in determining how your coffee tastes. This week, we'll be talking about how the water chemistry affects your cupping experience. But first, let's check out this blind cupping that we did with four different kinds of water. Okay, so I'm joined here with Redwan, our resident barista and barista. Hello. So Redwan, at the end of the cupping, we ranked the coffees in order of our favorite to our least favorite. Yeah. And you had some different uh, choices as opposed to me and Kazuko. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a bit about um, what you what you experienced at the cupping table. So I ranked cup number one my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, then cup number four. Was it? Yeah. Three mm -hmm. then two. Yeah. Okay, so so why was uh, cup number one your, your favorite? Um, found it very clean, um, sweet. It almost tastes like a um, like a concentrate that you bypass. So okay. it had that cleanliness. Yeah, mainly that's why I chose it because uh, okay. it's kind of my preference. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree that it was uh, it was very clean. Mm. Um, I I enjoyed that aspect of the coffee as well. That was very yeah. clean. Uh, there was sweetness and the flavor. Um, so why was uh, was it cup two? Cup, cup two was your least favorite. Why was that your least favorite? It was the most sour. Um, yeah, it just like when it was hot, all the way from hot to cold, it was just sour. I didn't know when it was hot, it was a lot nicer. But when it cooled down, the sourness really stood out. Mm. I actually switched from cup number three and two. Um, from hot to cold. Uh, when it was hot, yeah, cup number three was. My least favorite, favorite, but when it cooled down, cup number two became my right. least favorite. Yeah. Okay, so I ranked cup four as my favorite yeah. um, because I felt that it was the most balanced mm -hmm. out of the four four cups. What? How did you find cup number four? Uh, cup number four was balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, a lot of flavors. The body was very viscous. Yeah, um, yeah I liked it, which is why I ranked it second. Right. To the uh, cup number one. Yeah. So I, I liked cup number four also because as you said that was it was more viscous in terms of the body yep. um, and mouthfeel and um, there was substan good substantial flavor with it as well. Cup one was definitely clean and I enjoyed that aspect of the, the cup, mm -hmm. but at the same time also I felt like the flavors were a little bit less intense yeah. than what I liked uh, yeah. and the body was thinner. Yeah. So that's why I picked uh, cup four. So cup three started off great for me. There was it was very strong and had intense flavors, yeah. but as it cooled down, it very quickly deteriorated and became like harsh right. and astringent, which was why like I put it as my least favorite after it cooled. Right. But during when it was hot, I actually felt like cup two was a bit more sour than um, cup three, which is why initially I put cup two as my least favorite. But then I changed it once it cooled down. Right. So the funny thing is that cup four actually has a very close TDS profile to cup two, right. which cup two we both didn't enjoy, but cup four was um, up there in the rankings, yeah. um, which is weird because the TDS is the same. But I guess the composition of the minerals within that TDS is very different. Right. So Cup 2 is the third wave water classic profile, right. which has around 140 TDS. And then which is their recommendation, right? Yes. Right. And our shop coffee has around 127 TDS. Right. So I guess the key takeaway is to be aware of the type of water that you use mm -hmm. uh, for cupping right after roasting. Right. Mm. Ideally, it should be as close as the brewing environment as possible. But of course, when customers buy retail, it is very hard to control that environment, mm -hmm. which is why we also give them like the specs of our water to 
Right. Keep it within a controlled environment as possible. Okay. Yeah, but I think like even if we give customers the specs to our water, it's quite hard for them to recreate or, or even if we teach them how to, it's just right. a lot of hassle yeah, of to, to redo that. So I guess may maybe we should like uh, provide our filtered water on tap yeah. that they can bring a bottle and store and go home to, to brew with. Yeah. So let us know what you think. Have you had very different experiences with different kinds of brewing water? Should roasteries start providing you with the water that they roast it to? Let us know in the comments section below. If you're enjoying our pro tips, click the subscribe button below, like us on Instagram, Facebook, follow us so that you get notified when we release more pro tips like this in the future. See you next week. See ya.